we have some native Texas box turtles crawling all over each other so they can get to their food. We have a lot of things for them to eat, lettuce and berries and corn. And over there in your upper right corner, you see a little guy coming into view. He is called a South American redfoot tortoise. So he is over there in the pen with the little box turtles also trying to get his share of food. So they love to eat and they all seem to fight each other for it almost, but they're just all trying to get their share. The little box turtle you see there has blue paint on him. He is a rescue. We do a lot of animal rescues. He was found walking up someone's driveway. Unfortunately, people do mean things like that to turtles and tortoises, which you should never do. They can feel on their shell, and so it hurts them when people do things like that to them. So we should always remember to leave wildlife alone and just let them live in peace. This is Todd. Todd is an adult-sized South American redfoot tortoise. You saw the baby a minute ago. The baby with the box turtles was called Timmy. So this is Todd over here also eating his lettuce and his berries. Todd's one of our very favorite animals. He's very friendly. He loves being petted. Like I said before, they can feel it when people are touching their shell. So when you're nice to him and pet him, he definitely enjoys that. All the kids at our programs always enjoy watching Todd walk around and getting to pet him. He's very friendly and sometimes we think he might think he's a dog. You can see he might have a little bit of a problem trying to find his lettuce there. He has some eyesight problems nowadays as he's getting a little bit older. He'd be middle-aged basically. These guys can live over 50 years, but he's probably 25 years old or so and he has a little bit of, of eyesight issues, but he still gets around green. And finally, we have Toby here, another one of our very favorite animals. We don't get to take him out nowadays because he's so big. This is an African sulcata tortoise. He's a spur tortoise, and his name is Toby. And Toby's probably over 100 pounds, so he's very large. You might not get tell from this video here but he is eating corn shucks. The corn that you saw the turtles and tortoises eating before, these are the shucks from that corn. So he loves to eat that kind of thing. He'll also eat watermelon. He loves the whole watermelon. We cut it up in pieces and he eats the rind and all. And he'll eat the same way with pumpkin. And then he'll eat things like heavier types of lettuce like your kale and your greens and things like that that, that he really enjoys eating. He also walks around the yard he eats grass. He'll also eat hay that we get for him in the winter time. He's a great guy and we love him a lot too. And now we're moving to a whole other part of the world. We are going to Australia. This is an Australian blue tongue skink. You may see his little blue tongue stick out as he goes for those super worms there. That's one of his favorite foods. He'll also eat crickets. He's an omnivore so he'll eat some various lettuces and things too. You'll see as you see the side of his head there, you'll see some little holes on the side of his head. Those are his ears. And Skinky there, that's his name, his skin almost feels like a snake. It's very smooth and dry. And he's fairly slow moving, so he doesn't get around really fast, as you can see there. So he will just kind of crawl around and go after those worms, which are really what he loves more than any other food that we feed him. There you see his little blue tongue. Say bye, Skinky. This next guy we see is also from Australia, but he is called a bearded dragon. You can see those holes on the side of his head too, which are his little ears. He sticks his tongue out like that and just grabs those worms. He's a little bit faster than skinky over there so you can also see he has little spiky things along the side of his head and along the side of his body those things are not really sharp they're there more to ward off your predators and when he gets really mad the reason he's called a bearded dragon is that under his chin there will turn really black and it'll look like a beard and that's when you know he is not in a good mood at all but he does love his worms and he will get very excited about eating them when they go into his cage. You can see how he uses his eyes there to see them out of the side of his head and will just go after them. 
He may be full right now already though. Say bye, bye there, bearded dragon. We are now going to feed a venomous snake. You can see the dead rat, it's a young rat, or what we call a medium-sized rat, sitting there on the paper. We're gonna move a venomous cotton mouth into the cage, see if he will eat for us. As soon as he figures out there's food, he will probably eat it. Let's see what happens. Haven't found it yet. His pits might pick it up. They're, they're heat sensors. They have two little pits between their eye and their nose, one on each side of the head, and this can tell temperature. He's just trying to figure out how to get out of this temporary cage I have him in. Doesn't know exactly what's going on. You can see the underbelly there very well. See if he sees that rat. He's still trying to figure out how to get out. He's thinking. Oh wait, he might be sensing it now. I see him hunting a little bit. There you go, cotton mouths. Rarely hesitate. Let's see what this guy does. He knows he bit it. So he's now trying to find it. <clears throat> we'll see if he finds it. Oh, looky there. Oh, look at that. You don't get to see that very often. What he just did was reset his fangs after biting that rat when we first put him in there, or actually not when we put him in there, when he first discovered it. Still not sure what to do in this temporary enclosure here. Many times this is how they'll hunt in the wild. They'll bite their prey. The prey will run a little bit and then they'll have to find it. Well, he's still thinking about how to get out, I believe, instead of his food, but we'll see. They're usually pretty tunnel vision when it comes to food, but you never can predict what a wild animal will do. And this is a wild snake. This is not a pet. He is just being curious. You can see the banding on him. Many people believe cotton mouths are black are really dark. This is a dark colored snake, but he's well marked. This is an adult. This is a good sized cotton mouth, about three feet. I'm going to leave the room for a second. Just leave the camera on here and see if that helps him eat. Sometimes leaving the room helps. As you can see, the cotton mouth is sitting there thinking, where is my food? Where's the head to this food? So he's going to kind of go around the body till he finds the head. Then he will begin swallowing. He will actually take his lower jaw and spread it. And when they spread the lower jaw, 
That's the part that spreads, not the upper jaw. A venomous snake has the advantage of fangs, which we'll probably see in a few minutes here. And those fangs will help bring it in, but it's the lower jaw that he walks it in slowly until he gets all the way to the tail. Let's wait and see what happens. See, he's already opening that lower jaw. Can't really see that. Maybe if he'd lift it up a little bit for us. Oh, okay, we'll pull it back, that'll work. So he's trying to figure out, how am I gonna swallow this rat? So he's got the head of the rat in his mouth. He's trying to get past the shoulders of the rat. That's the hard part. See, he keeps lifting his head, trying to get that right traction to pull that food in. It's kind of like you using your fingers to pull something towards you. That's what they're doing with their jaws. It's like their fingers. He's really pushing and pulling at the same time. And he'll get in just a little bit at a time. And that's how he ends up swallowing the entire rat. We watch closely here, we might can see his fangs looking like little fish hooks, hooking the rat, pulling it in so he can swallow it. It's the benefit of a snake with fangs. But if you were looking at a non-venomous snake doing the exact same thing, he has two rows of teeth that he pulls his food in with. So the venomous snake uses their fangs, the non-venomous snake uses four rows of teeth, two on each side. There we go, you can see that fang just then. It's that little pink flesh that you see there, up below the eye, close to the nose, but inside the mouth. And those fangs are movable. They can move in or out, up or down, sideways or inward. Now he's working on getting the hips in. He's gotten past the shoulders. And a lot of times when they just pause like that, they're just resting. This takes a lot of work for a snake to swallow their food. Now he's going to really be able to pull it in faster now that he's got those hips started. So we're getting towards the end of him swallowing this mill. We'll see how far it goes down or we can see the lump in his body here in a second. There he goes. Look at him bring that down using that lower jaw because that's the part that stretches. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> Just the tail hanging out. See if he can get that all the way down. Oh, he's going to be a full snake. See how he's turning his neck a little bit to push that down. He's using the muscles of his body to get that food down into his stomach so he can begin the digestive process. For a snake, it generally takes about 12 hours for the digestive process to start. And that's why you'll see a lump in their body because the food's not breaking down immediately. You can see that lump right there at that second curve 